Hello everyone, welcome to aitechman.com. My name is Sumit and here I am with my new video in Salesforce integration series. This is the part one of that video. And in this video, I am going to demonstrate you how to configure and test the REST API integration in your Salesforce org. Now, in order to test this functionality, you don't require any coding knowledge. Even so without coding knowledge, you can test the REST API configuration, REST API integration in your organization, in your Salesforce org. Before move ahead, you need to do a couple of things. You need to uh, have a Salesforce developer org or sandbox environment. So in my case, I'm going to use the Salesforce developers account. The second thing we need to download and install is the Postman. So what is a Postman? So basically Postman is a tool which can be used or uh, using Postman we can perform, we can test the REST API uh, configuration, REST API request. We can make, we can make requests onto our Salesforce environment to REST REST protocol. So the first thing we need to do is the first thing we need to start is to reset our security token in our Salesforce org. So in my case, I've already got my Salesforce account and in this Salesforce account, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save my, I'm going to reset my security token because that security token will be requiring for connecting purpose. So I believe that all of you know how to reset your security token. So just in case, if you are not sure about it, I'll quickly do that for you once again. So I'll click on my profile settings and there's an option for reset my security token. Reset security token and it will send a security token on mailbox. So what I have done, I have created a notepad and I'm going to save my security token in that notepad. So let me get my security token and store it in my So that's my security token. And don't try to use the same credentials or security tokens because after this video, I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to change my security token and credentials. So you won't be able to use the same credentials and security token. I need to check my username also as well as my password also. So my password is this and my username. My username I can check from my account. So I can just check my username users and i'll just check my username that's my so i just copy and paste my username. so three informations we have extracted now let's proceed and let's configure the uh, rest api let's configure the rest api configuration in our salesforce application to test it out and in order to do that so the very first thing we need to do is we need to create a one connected app so you might have gone through my previous videos where I have created connected app in classic environment. This I'm here. I'm going to use the lightning environment for setting up the connected app. So I'll get back to my Salesforce environment and click on app manager, search for app manager and in app manager, there's an option for creating connected app. So I click on new connected app. I'll give this connected app name as test rest api contact email i'm going to mention my email id or i'll do one thing yeah i'll use the same one you can use any mail id whichever you will be using so the next thing you need to do is you need to enable your OAuth settings and here you need to provide the local host localhost dot here you need to provide localhost colon eight zero eight three so that's my localhost that's a callback URL and the oath scope so I'm giving full permissions on this oath scope scroll down that's all you have to do in this screen scroll down and click on save you'll get a message that allow to do 10 minutes so you can simply click on continue it will keep on configuring in back end so spaces are not allowed, it says the contains only, okay, that's the app name. And here it is not allowed, I added space actually, so that's why so I just removed that. So as, so uh, the connected app 
as you know that in in salesforce all the applications all the fields and all the objects they need to follow the uh, rule and the convention rule naming and that's there no spaces are allowed and that was adjusted now here we'll be getting the api enable the oath setting so we'll be once we click on continue we'll be getting the consumer key and consumer secret and these consumer key and consumer secret will be going to use for connecting purpose so i just copy this consumer key and paste it in notepad so that's my consumer key and i need a consumer secret also i copy my consumer key and consumer secret so all these details will be going to use to set up a url in our next so i'll quickly click on manage there are few more settings which we need to check it out so i click on manage edit policies and here i just say relax ip restrictions and click on save so from our side the setting has been configured successfully from salesforce now we need to set up a url and that url we can test from postman in order to get in order to generate the instance um, with the security token and the instance your access token and instance you are and for this we need to create a query now so what will be the query which we can pass from or which we can pass from postman to test it out and that query will be uh, that query we need to write is the https 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 login dot salesforce dot com slash services slash both to slash token question mark grant underscore type is equal to password and client underscore id is equal to client underscore id we need to plus pass client id here and a client id is the consumer key so i just pass client id and client underscore secret and my client secret is this is my client secret the consumer secret this would be my client secret client secret and username we need to pass username so my username is username is equal to the username as you can as i paste my username and password is equal to the password contains my password including security token so this is a complete url now the next step we need to do is we need to copy this url and make a post request from our uh, postman so i click on plus and i'm going to make a post request once we make a post request Salesforce will verify this request and based uh, first of all Salesforce will, uh, Salesforce will verify this request and it will quickly verify the client ID and client secrets to make sure that the request is coming from the authorized required authorized user and then Salesforce will respond back with JSON string which contains our access token and instance URL which will be going to use for remaining purposes. So here everything is fine but the password is not correct actually because it reset it so what i will be doing is i'll just re i'll just copy my password once again and paste it here make sure that we'll be passing the proper string and click on send when we make a send request uh, let's try once again you can see once the process completed successfully and once the salesforce verified the request salesforce respond back with a json and that json contains the access token instance url id token type issued at and signature so what i will be doing i would be copy this file copy this code and paste it in my notepad because we'll be use, we'll be going to use these details for our next query now so what we have done we have successfully connected we have successfully tested the environment that our salesforce can successfully uh, work means from a postman we can successfully made a re post request or we can we can made uh, api request to salesforce and salesforce will also respond back now let me test the 
query to fetch the details to display the details from an account so for in order to do that my query will be i need to we need to create a query and the query will be instance url i would suggest you to note down all the queries beforehand so that we need to simply copy paste this services slash data slash version 50.0 because we'll be working in 50.0 environment now and query is equal to you can pass a select query so i like select name comma phone from account and i copy this query paste it in postman create a new made a new request it's a get request so i pass this query now when i try to execute this it will throw an error message and the error message is session expire or invalid session id why we are getting this error message because we need to use this access token uh, to make a request will be we are hitting this endpoint will be hitting this endpoint this service url with this instance url for fetching the details but at this endpoint we need it need to it, it is going to verify this access token and we right now we are not passing any access token so we need to pass an access token as well so how to pass an access token i click on headers and in key i just write authorization value will be bearer paste and paste it and when i make a when i made a request you can see when we made a request we are getting few information so we have an option so these all are the queries so we can test all these queries from our workbench also so here i write our query and uh, it should be like this i'll just rephrase my query so my query will be i'll just refresh my rephrase my query question mark query q is equal to so i'll just rephrase this query i i explicitly did that just to show you that if we pass wrong query what what output will be getting and you can see now salesforce authorized my request it's a get request salesforce authorized it successfully and it respond back with the record that uh, the accounts which we requested and we requested for name and phone so we are getting name and phone the, that's a name and phone now let's suppose if i would like to create a new record into salesforce using this query so what i will be doing is the query will be in order to create a record in order to create a record uh, to into salesforce using rest api through postman the query we need to pass is https slash service slash data uh, slash data version 40.50.0 slash and we will be going to create record into s object and i want to create record into object and the object api name so object api name is account i copy this it's a post request because we are going to add a new record header we need to pass so the best way to do is instead of writing the same thing again that's the advantage of postman that instead of creating the query again instead of creating a uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> so instead of doing the settings once again we can simply duplicate this make change the request and i am going to uh, i am going to change the here also means i just change the query we have header so that's an authent authorization but along with authorization i need to i need to add one content type is equal to application json and in body we need to pass the information so i just draw and i'm going to pass a message so i just i'm just passing a name field and in name i just write test rest api from postman test rest api from postman and we simply made a request and once we made a request salesforce respond back with an id this indicates that the record has been inserted successfully this is the record id let's quickly go and check whether record inserted or not and i'll just quickly get back to my salesforce instance sales application and in sales application i click on accounts and i'm going to check the test rest api from postman 
and we just check it out. This is a record we created just now. Now the next step is I would like to make uh, I would like to update record. I would like to update the same record. There is no phone number. So I would like to add a phone number to this account. So basically I want to update the phone number for this account. So I right click and I'm going to duplicate this. And the method I'm going to use is the patch method. We need to change a URL little bit and the, the changement we'll be doing is in account along with account we'll be going to pass the record ID. So I just pass record ID along with this URL. Headers will remain same. Body also body I'll change a little bit and instead in name instead of a name parameter, I would be passing phone number. And phone number. I'll just add a phone number, let's say 100, 200, 300, 400. Just and click on send. And if the request process successfully, it won't respond back anything. But we can validate from here if the, the status code is 204, it means the server successfully processed the request but is not returning any content. So see, we are getting a message also. So basically, it's not Salesforce is not responding with any ID or nothing, but the record has been updated successfully. We'll just quickly go and discuss it. We'll just quickly check. And you can see the record has been updated successfully. Now, the final is if I want to delete this record and in order to make a delete request, I'll just duplicate this, click on delete and I want to delete this record. So because I want to delete this record, so therefore there would be no body. I set this to none. Headers will remain same. There would be no content type because we are not going to pass any information, but the authorization will be required. So I click on send. And again, we got 204. It means the request has been processed successfully, but again, it's not returning any content. So let me go and check whether the record is inserted or record is deleted or still there or not. So as you can see, if I'll just check my details, so I'll just click on account and you can see my record has been removed successfully. And I will go and check into my recycle bin whether, whether, whether the record added there or not. So you can see the record has moved to recycle bin. So that's the way we can use Postman in order to perform, in order to make REST API request onto our Salesforce or Salesforce application into Salesforce account. So that's the way we test the REST API integration in our Salesforce app without having programming knowledge. To know more about the program, to know more about the training programs, you can visit our website www.aitech1.com. You can reach out to us on support at the red aitech1.com if you have some queries or you can contact us on the given phone number. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for more updates. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.